I recently scored the coolest interview with one of the co-founders of Sense, as well as product manager at Sense. And I've been blogging for almost 10 years about things like smart homes, or say electric vehicles, such as Tesla, or efficiency related topics. That's the overarching theme here as we move from fossil fuels like natural gas for my water heater is now uh, instead electricity for a hybrid electric water heater and monitoring the power use of that and things like two electric vehicles in my garage, my all EV home. Well, that's been a, a joy for me in the last few years to really focus on that. I, I kind of by some chance stumbled into a really cool preview of what Sense is doing. I, I got a scoop on significant product announcements from Sense. I think you will sense that as I go through the interview where they're showing me stuff that no one else in the world has seen yet that's coming up later in 2021. And it's only February. So one more thing, please consider subscribing. A single digit percentage of my viewers actually subscribe, or at least give a thumbs up if you get some value out of this video. Here we go. Let's get started now. All right, this is Paul Brand from Tinker Try here, and I'm working with Sense. And here's the homepage. And the idea here is my 200 amp service panel has been using this product for a while. And I'm here today to find out the latest of what's new with Sense, given I um, have had it for about a year and a half. And to be honest, I haven't quite kept up with their new announcements. If you could introduce yourself over at Sense. Yeah, sure. So, I mean, just you know, to review, Sense is a product goes in your electric panel, is able to give you a real time view of what's going on in your house and how much energy you're using and devices in your house are using. Uh, over the last year, uh, we've been pretty hard at work on, you can think of, Kind of two separate tracks you know one is compatibility and making sense work in more homes for more people and then another one is kind of pushing the boundaries of what sense is able to do with our labs effort which is uh, something that emory will talk a little bit about um, you know on this sort of expanding access to sense for more people uh, we've added support for a number of things so the first is 400 amp service uh, you know we've had a lot of people who've got larger homes, 400 amp service. And so far we haven't been able to support it. We added support for that over the summer uh, where we use the solar port for an extra set of sensors that are able to go over the other leads for your, your second uh, 200 amp panel. Similarly, we added support for generators. So you can, uh, when power goes out and your generator's on, you're able to monitor how much power your generator is putting into your house and then also manage it better uh, to try to keep, uh, so, so you know how much, uh, generator you've got left and be able to manage the power you're using while you're on backup power. Um, one of the more recent larger software releases we added was support for time of use rates. So, you know, Sense has always had the ability to show you not just kilowatt hours or watts, but also dollars. Um, and we had a fairly simple way to enter your average kilowatt per hour cost so we could estimate costs for devices and, and total use over a period of time. Uh, we added support for time of use plans. Uh, so there's you know, many utilities have plans where they charge you different amounts for your energy depending on the time of the day. So you know, at night, uh, power might be cheaper and they use that to incent you to say, charge your EV at night uh, or move your dishwasher past peak hours. So we've added support for the ability to you know, enter your rate plan into Sense and we can more accurately track you know, exactly how much things cost um, with that time of use plan. That was one of the sort of number one uh, user requested features uh, that's sort of been open for a while in the forums that, that we finally were able to get to and ship. Um, and we've also done it, you know, we found people have been sort of very uh, excited about and happy with, with our integration with the energy monitoring smart plugs. So we added just some quality of life work around those. Uh, so this thing called user configurable standby. So you know, you're able to decide exactly when a plug is going to be on or on standby mode based on, you know, where the power is. So, you know, before uh, it was either on or off and we've got things like um, say an Xbox in standby mode uses 10 Watts of power. And that would always show is on where now you can set a threshold. So it will show in standby and not show as a bubble when it's actually off and in standby mode. And then when you're actually playing, it'll show as a bubble and beyond. So things like, did I leave it on or is somebody playing right now can be much more accurate because you're able to tune these things. Um, well, that's awesome. Uh, uh, sorry about that. Didn't hear you. Yeah, that, That's awesome. I, I have a question about uh, not so much the idle. That makes a lot of sense that you've added that. I hadn't really thought of that. So that sounds like a great feature. Um, I had a question about the 400 amp. So I'm not too familiar with the you know, world of building mansions, but what is it? If you build like a 5,000 square foot house with 
four air conditioning HVAC zones and all. Is that what people are typically doing then? Putting 400 amp service panels in? Yeah, I mean, you're, but you, we're seeing it. I mean, it used to be you had to have a really large house to have 400 amp service. We're actually starting to see it more and more, even in new construction, to be ready for EVs and everything that's electrified. Because you know, before you might have uh, you know, gas, hot water heater, gas range, you know, and then electric, a few other things. Now the you know the trend is electrify everything. Builders are just preemptively putting 400 amp service in to be ready for an all electric household and having EVs. So you know it it started for us. It was you know a lot of people that have large homes, but now we're starting to see you know even people who just have new home builds that aren't that large will have 400 amp service. So it's becoming more and more important. Thank you, uh, Emery. I think you had a word to say, add to there. Uh, yes, um, I would just echo what Chris was saying. You know a lot of um, a lot of features that we've built in the, the past couple of months have been to really extend and make sense work for more setups. So um, being able to monitor specific devices, uh, generators, integrate with you know, a time of use rate plan and really um, deliver sense to, to more users. And then we've also um, been working on something that we call Sense Labs, which I'm happy to sort of give a, a overview or walkthrough of. And I will briefly share my screen here. Okay, while you're setting that up, I'll just mention too, my own situation where I, I'm in a house built in 95, came with a 100 amp service panel, added HVAC after um, cooling. So that meant 200 amp service panel upgrade. And then two years ago, first Tesla Model 3, and then one year ago, second Tesla Model 3 in the garage, which meant a 100 amp service panel in the garage, added two years ago, proactively thinking ahead. What if we end up with two EVs? and paying an electrician to move that 80 feet from my 200 amp panel over to the garage. So that poses some unique challenges, right? Um, poses challenges for, for Sense or any product to reliably detect what's going on in the, 200, uh, the 100 amp sump panel. Um, that's you know one thing we've talked about a little bit and we're looking into and maybe using the, the solar product that you guys have the leads uh, you know, repurposed for my environment. Yeah. That was actually something that I missed, thank you. Uh, it was another thing that we shipped uh, a couple of months ago is what we're calling uh, dedicated circuit monitoring. So the ability to, you know, as for 400 amp service, we use that solar port to take an extra two set of sensors around the second 200 amp panel. Uh, the dedicated circuit monitoring is the same thing, but instead of around another panel, you can use uh, these the flex sensors, we call them, to monitor either individual devices or individual circuits. So, uh, you know, for something that, for whatever reason, sense is uh, not able to completely reliably detect in your house, or you want it to be just 100% accurate, you're able to use these extra sensors to be able to directly monitor uh, loads or, um, or circuits. Awesome. Uh, thank you. I'm, so, I'm glad we brought that up. All right. You've got some uh, PowerPoint for us here or Google Doc. Sure thing. So I'll start by sort of explaining what Sense Labs is. We're really excited about this and um, have gotten a lot of positive feedback from folks in our uh, Sense community. Uh, and, you know, essentially it's a area in the Sense app that sort of serves as our invention space where we can try out new projects. Um, we have a lot of ideas and uh, a lot of ways that we make use of this high res data collected by Sense. Um, and ultimately our goal is to uh, release new features and projects that help you understand your energy use, lower your energy use, and then understand what's going on in your home. And so a couple of examples of the um, projects we've introduced in Sense Labs are detectors to, to look for motor stalling in something like maybe a, a large HVAC um, um, component, a compressor, for example, um, an experiment to monitor your power quality by looking at the voltage coming into your house. Um, and then a few other ones like uh, we can compare your AC energy use and take in a couple of uh, factors like how big your home is, where it's located, and compare you to a cohort of other similar homes to see how long is your HVAC uh, or how long is your AC running, what are your start times, what are your run times, and alert you if anything seems a little funny. Um, and then finally, uh, a floating neutral detector. So in many homes, um, if there's a, an issue in the panel or perhaps on the utility side with the neutral, you can have what's called an open or a floating neutral, which is um, can pose a shock risk and uh, damage appliances. And so that's, that's another voltage issue that we monitor right in the Sense Lab section. So this is available to all users. Uh, we released it uh, in, I think, about halfway through last year. And we've been iterating and rolling these things out and gathering feedback. So it's available um, under this Labs tab here and then also in both our iOS and Android apps. 
um, on, right on the trends or dashboard screen. So I can walk through a couple of examples of these. Um, and essentially, uh, the goal here is we're looking at this high res data and, and looking for things that might look wrong. So as an example, uh, if you're familiar with sort of the energy signatures and how Sense does device detection, you'll know that um, a motor when it starts up will have a quick spike and then sort of level off. Um, but on the right here, you can see an example of what Sense sees when we see a stalling motor. And you can see that a motor here is trying to start several times and failing. And so if Sense sees this, uh, from the lab section in under the motor stalls project, we'll actually alert you and say, hey, we, we see uh, motor stalling in your house. It looks like we've seen you know, 20 or 30 of those in the last 30 days. Uh, here's how that compares to other users. And here's an example of this data. Uh, and we've had uh, several examples of folks getting an alert like this and going and listening to um, some components in, on their HVAC and uh, having a, a service tech come by and confirming, yes, you have a failing uh, start capacitor, you have a, uh, a damage component of some sort and, and making a replacement early rather than having a more costly problem down the line. Amory, if I could interrupt for just a moment. Oh boy. Uh, four years ago, my capacitor failed and it was at the worst possible hottest time of year. Having my wife and I know why, that. Why is it always then when it happens? Yeah, <laughs> it was bad. <laughs> and then waiting for help. Luckily, uh, she has some relatives in the HVAC business that were able to get us going pretty quickly. But uh, not everyone has that and being able to proactively replace it before that misery. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, that story and, really rang true to me. <laughs> yeah. And this past year, especially, you know, with a lot of folks working from home all the time, um, we've seen a lot of folks in our community, you know, running their AC more, using more power um, and just being home more often. So during those really hot summer months, that's not when you want to find out that you've got a, a failing capacitor and have a couple of days wait while you try and get someone out to the house. So um, we're hoping that this will help warn people proactively and, and prevent both that uncomfortable and uh, also potentially expensive problem. Great. Um, so I'll be mindful of time here, but I'll, I'll just highlight one or two more experiments. Um, this one has been another experiment that folks have been excited about, and we call it the power quality project. Um, and essentially, this is a view of the voltage uh, coming off of your panel. So um, if you're familiar with uh, sort of the high res data that Sense has, um, we show most things to you in either dollars or uh, watts, but we're also monitoring voltage. Um, and so in a standard house, you'll have slight voltage fluctuations as you turn on and off major devices. Um, but for the most part, things should be running at a steady 120 uh, volts. However, in many cases, if there's an issue either on your side or on the utility side, perhaps the transformer in your neighborhood is undersized compared to the, the number of houses, <clears throat> excuse me, perhaps there's a wiring issue, perhaps there was a downed power line after a storm. There could be a number of reasons that you'd have voltage dips or spikes. Um, but your experience of it may be flickering lights or when you turn on a large appliance, maybe sort of flickers uh, around the kitchen or something like that. But um, with this, uh, project, you're able to actually see those voltage fluctuations. And you can see uh, when they dip out of what we consider the normal or standard threshold um, of around, you know, a couple percent of 120, we call that a voltage dip or a spike. And this project shows those to you and, and can give you a heads up of uh, potential issues in your panel. Before you proceed, another story. Wow. Another. Uh, so remember, I moved in the house in 95. Uh, 10 houses built around us, gradually getting air conditioners. Eventually, our transformer wasn't able to keep up. So I had a UPS in my house monitoring voltage dips and proving that to the utility company over the past year, it was getting worse and worse. And then finally, after three summers of that, they finally put a new transformer in the neighborhood and the problem went away for the next 20 years. So nice, <laughs> again, for a definite need out there that I felt firsthand in my own home ownership experience of 25 years being in this home. Yeah, that, that's great to hear at Rings Trivia. We've had uh, several folks in our Sense community have similar stories, you know, as folks increasingly move electric, which is a good thing. It puts more strain on the grid. So when more EVs come online in a neighborhood, when more people have a pool and, you know, put pool pumps and hot tubs and just more and more strain on the grid, especially in the summer months when they're running air conditioners all the time, uh, we start to learn that some of these things are undersized compared to the actual uh, requests that are happening to the grid. So um, we see a lot of people, especially at the end of sort of the service line, have voltage issues like this. Okay, I have about a minute or two of some closing thoughts. Was, was that your last slide you wanted to show or? 
Um, I'll show one more briefly, uh, and okay, this is cool. our AC energy comparison. So this is sort of another take on using this high-res data, and this is um, not just diagnosing a, a specific fault that might happen in your home, but comparing your energy use to other users. And so um, as Sense collects this high-res data, we sort of run these offline processes to look at cohorts of houses that are similar to yours and can let you know, hey, it looks like your energy, your home is using more energy for cooling compared to other homes. So homes of your size, homes experiencing similar weather, pa weather patterns and uh, homes in your area. And so this is a nice sort of, um, sort of gut check on how much energy you're using for cooling compared to other users. And this could be a good starting point to a conversation with your utility or having someone come out and, and look at your AC or HVAC system as well. Oh, great, thank you for that. Um, so yeah, a couple of closing thoughts. One, you mentioned device detection and getting more reliable single device detection. And my brain is going ahead years maybe. I'm not asking for product plans, but I'm just saying that knowing what I do about things like Ream hybrid electric water heaters, having Ream as a company, they've got the data, right? They're using Wi-Fi connected smart devices. They know some data. Tesla is similar. Tesla has an API where They've got data about charging sessions of your cars and each car in my garage, for instance. Those are different approaches. They're software collaborations, right? You guys are doing the hardware clamps. I just think about all of it. And part of why I think about this stuff is, and you're hearing it here first, You know, my wife and I are probably thinking about the next phase of where we'll live and maybe we get to build a net zero house, who knows? So the years ahead, this is the stuff I think about. What's coming one, two, three years ahead? If I were to be building such a house, what would my 400 amp circuit panel look like? Is 200 amps, like you guys said, it's full now in my house, right? Between the um, the different stuff that got added after I moved in here, even 200 amp was barely enough, especially with the two cars. So this this is exciting, and I, I imagine you know you guys are more into the hardware, but I think there'll be some software partnerships. I guess uh, the TP Link is a hardware company you've got a relationship with, right? And I think the one the KP was at 115 uh, single outlet monitoring. That sounds appealing to me. Um, let me just end with that question then. Do you have more plans to do a little more of that with maybe some more partners on? smart plug monitoring devices using software. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and Great. You know, I, I tend to think of, you know, we're not, we're not really a device detection energy disaggregation company. We try to think of ourselves as, you know, home intelligence. So you can see what's going on proactively, let you find problems and understand where your energy is going. And so that means we're not trying to limit ourselves to just looking at the power signal and figure out everything from that we would and are actively working to get information from all sources. So power signals, but you know, the local area network, devices like the Wemo Insight smart plugs and the TP Lake KP-115s. And absolutely in the future, we're looking at integrating with as many other data sources that we can to try to bring that all together to give you that view and that level of intelligence of, Where's your power going? How can you be more efficient? And are, is there anything going wrong in your house? Uh, thank you so much. Um, so yeah, if someone's listening to this or watching this and hasn't actually gone to Sense's website and looked at the blog post at sense.com that explained a lot of this about AI and ML uh, and machine learning, the, using those phrases that are now becoming too prevalent. Everyone's using those as catchphrases, but you guys are very clear. Data science, using the waveforms, using very high sampling rate to try to figure out what's going on in your home. Um, it's a pretty cool concept. The installation is pretty straightforward and I would definitely encourage you to read your blog post. You guys talked about electric vehicles. You've talked about extensive, extensive conversations even about hybrid electric water heaters. It's a 30 amp water heater that's heating up your shower and your hot water taps in your home with electricity rather than gas. So you saw the trend here is what we're talking about, electrifying your home. It's all going electric. So. This was really good. This, this exceeded my expectations. I really appreciate your time and good meeting you all. Great to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thank you.